we come in? Well, I took really good I, notes. I, I don't know. Six minutes. Okay. No. Broken. No. All, right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So you missed my tirade. <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> I got good notes. Um, I think you ought to repeat it. Yeah. <laughs> so so I'll ask I'll ask Jason. And for, for what it's worth, I I'm a little put off by this whole thing too, and it's why I'm hoping that it is. The, the dreamland uh, trying Initiative. to make it more trying to make it more interesting than <coughs> than well, anticipated so um, <clears throat> but, okay well uh, may I suggest that that paper that I gave you or that is available you know publicly mm -hmm. that there be copies of the four types of government that are sure. available. Uh, maybe a hundred copies at that meeting for people to have reference. That will begin to educate them on what the alternatives might be as we come forward with a report. Yeah. So I think the more yeah. the people know about it, the better. I mean, I'm I'm in, I'm intrigued to see how much of the conversation on Thursday is uh, is directed that way. And who's um, convening it? Believe it's the select board doing it. And I, now I don't know if they have a moderator. Yeah. I, I'm. I, I, I don't know. The, the, the town administration was um, equally sort of sur surprised by this. So should I call Joe Hale and ask him how he said That might not be a bad idea, well, if I've you know. I've been him. working with him. You know, we're bringing the uh, Cape Cod Symphony here for next Christmas for Pops. Very nice. And I've been working on it for eight years. So that has, and Joe has taken the initiative and we got a plan so I'm happy to talk to Joe and see what he has in mind if that's yeah. okay with Ble me. please I, I'm, I'd be thrilled to hear what <laughs> from, from from his side of things so, so you could send a little information email around no response called for and we'll know what you found out yeah. I of course will do that my friend I am I think that sounds excellent <laughs> <laughs> that's when I was bucking the past that's right <laughs> well, no 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 I'm the one who's raising a fuss yeah. so if you're fussing do something there right. you go good for you um, all right so we took we sort of took other business out of order um, but I'll, I'll post a meeting for Thursday um, just in, for those who want to attend uh, so we're all set. Uh, the next item is the review of the position papers relative to investigated topics and discussion. Um, I believe we were supposed to talk about the audit committee and organizational structure. Well, I, th I had sent around um, to the members a um, sort of review of our audit committee mm -hmm. charter and the membership and a summary of audit committee organization structures from several other towns including the town of Wellesley um, let's go through here the others uh, Long Meadow and there was another one let's see uh, Mashpee Mashpee good thank you and and the the reason to do this was that uh, our committee right now has three members, the uh, chairman of the board and the chairman of the finance committee and one other member of the board of selectmen. And it always seemed to me that that group uh, is, they're all essentially what you might think of as uh, close to the administration. I'm not, some people might think of them as insiders. And I just think it would be helpful in one way to, to open up the audit committee's membership to include, and one way to do this would be to expand its membership by two people and have those both publicly appointed. They could be appointed by the selectmen, but they're not a member of other town committees. Mm -hmm. And hopefully they would have some professional background. And I think it's quite possible we can find people in the community who would be willing to serve in that capacity. They don't meet all that often, maybe four times a year at the most. Um, so I think that would be just one recommendation I would have, that the committee consider that. For, for this type of committee, would it be possible to have summer residents or seasonal residents, only because I, 
I believe to, I'm, I'm certain that we yeah. ha we would have enough people here with accounting and strong finance backgrounds who may be civically minded who are here in the summer. Uh, I think just a, just I, a thought. I, I, I don't I don't know if there's I, I think there that. you know there wouldn't have to be um, accountants per se. Mm -hmm. They, they, as long as they have some professional organizational experience, they might have served on audit committees in their capacity at other companies, right. which they would bring that experience with them. Um, I, I have no objection to summer residents serving. I was just curious. Uh, but I don't, you know, if our current, trying to remember, maybe some of you do, whether they're precluded at the moment or they're welcome, you know. We have um, at St. Paul's... Um, our treasurer is a very experienced um, financial person, mm -hmm. and uh, um, and Frank Robinson, who has just stepped down as, as treasurer, is um, uh, an attorney and has been doing the finances of St. Paul's. Martin McCaro is now the current one. Mm -hmm. And then we have a fellow named Phil Smith, who is a member of the vestry, but um, you know, it was a summer, six months summer resident, but he's back and forth all the time right. for uh, vestry meetings, monthly vestry meetings at St. Paul. And so in that context, someone like Phil Smith would be qualified as a, quote, summer person, but yet a regular exactly. here, and that might uh, enhance what we're trying to do is to show involvement. So I would right. keep that. I, I think those are good ideas, and I think that's, the, you know, that's one organization, if you expand that to you know, talk to the people who participate in 10 or 15 right. other organizations, I don't think we'll have difficulty. And, um, you know, I think there would be interest. I think, um, you know, this this kind of expanding the committee can't hurt, as at least as my, as the way I look at it. So, yeah. And if anybody doesn't have this, I'd be happy to send it around again. Um, the other th it, yeah, no, I understand. The, um, the other thing the audit committee is charged with, um, as I recall specifically, is, uh, is appointing the um, outside auditor. Uh, and one thing to think about, I'm not sure the committee should actually do the appointing or recommend an appointment to the Board of Selectmen, who's ultimately responsible for keeping the books and records of the organization through the town manager. Um, so that's just one other thing to, to, to make clear in our own minds of what our audit committee is charged with and whether or not they should have that responsibility as a decision maker or as a uh, recommending body. So. Um, so, with this uh, sort of change to the audit committee, would you recommend, or do you think we're going to be in a position to recommend a a substance or a change to the charter, or should we, or would we be in a position to say, hey, we think this is a good this is a good idea to um, investigate further, and we may want to do uh, set up a committee or set up a study to actually study whether or not we who the who an ideal audit committee would be well i don't i think it's not all that complicated john so i think we um if we all think about it seriously and go through in our own minds some of the major issues as why an expansion of the committee could be a good idea um i'm not <clears throat> sure i would uh, have a charter change if this was the only charter change mm. that came out of the committee. But right. if we have more than one, I think I would recommend going, our recommendation would be to do it, assuming the members of our committee support the concept. Understood. I, mean, I, I don't see yeah. why not. It's not, I, I don't think it's so much a matter of study as a matter of um, adding a little bit more independence to the audit review process that I don't see how it can be harmful. Is, so, is the yeah. audit committee a charter item? Yeah. yeah. The, the audit yes. committee at one point, um, yes, it had an amendment, I think, to the charter yeah. so it would, five years ago or seven. So maybe it's more now uh, to clarify um, some of its responsibilities. That's when I was on just the board. Just couldn't 
add two people to it, like from the board? Or from the probably not in a formal way. You'd probably okay. need to well, make that so change. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. I like the idea. Yeah, Very yeah, much. I'm I'm supportive of it as well. So. Uh, you want to talk about organizational charts too? Yeah, you know, I uh, I agreed to follow. I mean, clearly you have our organization chart that was handed out, I believe, by the town manager, and and that chart, it seemed to me, didn't reflect the way the town actually operates. And when you look at it, um, you would note, for example, that it talks about. Uh, I think it was public safety is a good example, and there isn't a an overall head for the fire department, the police department, and so on. Um, rather, the, as I understand it, the fire chief and the police chief still report to the town manager. Mm -hmm. And the chart didn't reflect that directly. And I think it's helpful to have a chart that reflects the actual reporting relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and I think some of the things, that, that at least that I think, need to be addressed are the relationship between the town and the uh, uh, plus departments and the nature of the contract between the NP and EDC and town and the town of Nantucket. Um, it's unusual. I don't think there's any other town in the Commonwealth that has such a formal arrangement. Um, and I, I've never found it to be one that, in my mind, serves the town well. Um, I did find an organization chart for the town of Barnstable, which mm. is kind of interesting in that it sort of takes, um, a, in terms of people who report to the town manager in Barnstable, even though they have a different form of government, they still have a hired oh, profession. A big chart. They have a uh, professional town manager who yes. still reports to their town council. Right. Um, and, and they uh, have the police, the public works, community services, and what they call regulatory services mm. are the major sort of administrative overview activities that report to the town manager. Right. And I just found that a uh, interesting way to put it. Um, our structure tends to, I think, take away the coordination and required planning between, it kind of separates them a little bit between land use and the Board of Selectmen, and to me, the land use policies of the town probably are almost more important and long-lasting in their impact on our community than, you know, whether the budget goes through for the landfill this year. And, and I think once the, the select board kind of steps away from that a little bit, they're I don't think as active in their planning responsibilities as they ought to be. So I think the uh, kind of chart that we see in Barnstable would make more sense for Nantucket. So that's one option. It's not easy, incidentally, to go online and find organization <laughs> charts from other towns. I'll, just, I'll bet they are. They, they don't just pop yeah. up. Um, so we may, uh, actually, we could ask uh, the town manager, maybe, I know that she has uh, communication with other town managers mm. on kind of a, not on a regular basis, but could ask them for copies of their organization charts, and that might help give us some other ideas. There are some towns that uh, have, as a matter of their bylaws, uh, a requirement that the town managers or town administrators uh, submit at least annually the organization chart to the board of selectmen, or select board as it may be called, um, for review mm -hmm. and information purposes. And I, given my own experience on the board, I think that's a helpful requirement. It, if, if the uh, town manager and the select board wanted to do that without putting in a bylaw, that's one thing. But if they are not doing it, I think the way the town is run is organizationally is important. And that might be helpful here as well. And I think I sent around some, when we first started months ago, John, a, um, one of the emails had um, ec excerpts, I'll call them, from several other town 
charters or bylaws reflecting their approach to how they mm. inform their select board or board of selectmen on how the town was organized. And those could be helpful. Yeah. Just clarify a question. Yeah. Um, right now, Andrew Gorse does or does not report to Lily. Well, you, you probably should ask him. I know that he is a contract, and his, as I understand it, his evaluation is performed by the Nantucket the Planning and Economic Development Commission, and they each are asked to fill out evaluation forms, and his contract is with the NP and EDC. That doesn't mean that um, under his contract he isn't required to perform the services for the town in an appropriate manner and under the direction of the town manager. Um, most people, whether they work for the town or the state government or private business, um, pay most attention I, to the person who pays them first. <laughs> so that's why I think it's a, it's a subtle but important distinction, Curtis. Well, I, I, when you look at PLUS and all the agencies under PLUS, if they're accountable to Andrew, which they are in the organization chart, I believe, right. uh, but through Andrew, does HTC or uh, uh, the building department have any accountability trickling down from Libby or the town manager to them? Well, I think those organizations, uh, the reporting relationship would go through this contract and set the contract aside, um, let's just say that I presume the town manager can give direct and direction to the planning director as she feels necessary. Um, but those, the staff people who support the HDC um, and the building inspectors and so forth report <coughs> through uh, the planning director, not and, you know, just as someone who might be the uh, facilities manager for the town reports through the head of the uh, DPW manager mm -hmm. to Libby. They're all indirect. Those spots are indirect. That, that's always been my understanding as, as well for what it's worth about how that relationship works as far as plus and town but, but, you know, no other town manager um, has, you know, the... Uh, folks who uh, serve as a staff for the Conservation Commission or the HDC, you may recall this was a discussion at some point about where the staff of the, uh, it's not staff of the HDC, staff that supports the HDC right. reports. Like three years ago, that was a, a topic mm -hmm. that came up, and it's come up several times over the past 20 years. And I think it's clear that each of the staff positions that report that support um, our regulatory bodies, except for those that report through the planning director, report up through the town manager and not to the commissions. I, I would hope when they're reviewed um, that their reviewers would ask the commissions how they feel the mm. person's performing. There's kind of a dotted line relationship yeah. and right. Um, I think that would be a normal, well-founded um, human resource policy arrangement is to make sure such, such review or such input is available to the person responsible for supervising those positions. Yeah. Seems like good governance yeah. that way. Yeah. So. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions for Rick? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. Moving on, I believe, oddly enough, our next agenda item would be the meeting timeline for the winter and the spring. Um, without having Tucker and Linda here, um, I don't know how concrete we want to make it, but is, so we've met twice in January. Is that working well for people? I know we would we would have had more to, to discuss had we not been stymied by the weather on Thursday. Um, but is twice a month? I think we need twice a month to be up to town meeting, definitely. Yeah. Okay. All right. we, we've got to get a report drafted. Right. You know, sometime before town meeting. So okay. So that that and that's that's all well and good. That works. Um, so 
the next item was going to be the discussion of the trip to Falmouth regarding the representative town meeting. Um, so obviously, that did not happen due to the foul weather on Thursday. Um, however, uh, Falmouth is almost on call, ready for, ready for us. So whenever we are ready to go back over there, they will make themselves available and ready. Like to try to go next week sometime. I think that works too. Mm -hmm. I believe it certainly works for me next week. I believe um, the the gentleman, the town uh, town clerk, said that he was um, it was he couldn't do late next week. So, like the fourth or the fifth or the sixth, somewhere in in that ballpark. Would um, well, my work. dilemma is um, I have responsibilities at St. Paul's next week, Tuesday morning at Sherburn Commons, and then Wednesday morning I do the early service. I can get that covered, okay, if one of those days is our day. Um, and if, if asked, I would say Tuesday is an easier day for me to and that's because Wednesday is staff meeting as well as the service at the church and it's helpful for me to Okay. Um, so I'm, Tuesday or Thursday would be my, Monday, Tuesday or Thursday would be my. Okay, I, I don't think we can do, he, I don't think he can do Thursday, no, the yeah. gentleman from, from Falmouth, but I can certainly check to see if he has a preference on Monday or Tuesday. Well, it depends what you guys can do. I still have, my car's going in the shop Tomorrow, okay. Tuned up. <laughs> I, like, I, I like going in a tuned up car. <laughs> um, so the other question is that I'm going to plead my ignorance here. What is the boat schedule for the High Line? It, there's a 740 boat, and then there's a 1030 boat. 740, 1030, um, mm -hmm. and uh, wait a minute. The 9.05 comes over and goes back to 10.30. The 12 o'clock comes over and goes back around 1.30. Yep. And then the next one that goes back is at 4.30. Right. So I assume it would make everyone's life easier if we took a 10.30 boat? I mean, I, th I think we're going to be in Falmouth for about an hour. Well, if I, we I, go at 10.30, we get over 11.30. By the time we get the car, it's 12.00. It's going to take 40, 40 minutes to get okay. down. It's almost 1 o'clock. Um, and I don't know if you're going to eat lunch before or right. after. Uh, I'd, frankly, yeah, go ahead. I'd go on the early boat. Um, okay. And I might even go over the night before and stay at my sister's, partly because the steamship 630 arrives just when the uh, 740 Highline arrives. So to get a ride... The parking uh -huh. lot is a half hour wait. Oh no, I can get a ride. I, I can grab a Uber. Um, and I'm just trying to think logistically. But what I'd like to do is get down there, um, have our meeting, and have lunch. Works for me. <laughs> so I'll like to eat lunch. So we'll, so we'll try. I didn't to, want to go too late. That's so true. so we'll try to schedule something at like ten then. Mm -hmm. I, I, like at like a ten o'clock well, meeting. No wait a minute. Or so if we get in for ten thirty meeting. We get there at eight forty. We get in at 8.40, we get on the road at 9, it's an hour, you know, between 10 and 11. If, if yeah. it had to be at 11 because of their other work schedules, we could still do it. Okay. Um, but anyway, I'm not pushing anyone. I'll go later if you want. Yeah. I always have a place to stay in Hyannis if, if it's, um, the weather's good. Okay. So. Let me... Let me check on that. All right. Um, but the, I, I think it would be nice to get this this one. Uh, yeah. If it had offer. to be Wednesday, I can I can arrange uh, to get coverage at St. Paul's. Okay. But that's the, the more critical of the two. two yeah. Okay. I can't do Wednesday. Um, oh, good. So do yeah. Tuesday. So there is a three o five coming back. Right. Just so you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Tuesday. Might be a little bit difficult, but I might be. I would prefer Monday if that. Oh, I that is the day Monday. after Super Bowl, though. <laughs> so well, getting up very early that Monday. Monday is, is I feel uh, a little tired. Sort of for church people, a, a day off. This right. is our down day. <laughs> All right. Well, let me let me touch base with him. See what he what he can do. What's right. realistic on his end, um, and then we'll. Okay. 
we'll, we'll see what we can do for that day. Um, post the meeting and all that fun stuff. Um, all right, so any other business at this point? All right. Um, Do you want to schedule the next? I say let's schedule. Let's schedule the next one. Um, so date and time of next meeting. Uh, we could do it later that week, whether it be the seventh or the eighth, or we could do it on on the eleventh. The eleventh works. And do the eleventh at one o'clock again. And, and is the eleventh a Monday again? It is, yeah. yeah. Those are good days, I think. Okay. All right. Why don't we plan on the eleventh at one o'clock then? And I'll send out. And that, that's making the assumption that we will have been to Falmouth. We will have been to Falmouth, and we will have uh, heard what the Dreamland has to say on Thursday. <laughs> Thursday um, evening. I was just looking if we're going to meet twice that month. Then two weeks later is school vacation. Um, school isn't vacation. It? Okay, so I don't know if we want to try to meet well, like, I will around be the twenty fifth. From the eighteenth to the twenty uh, fifth, anyway. Okay, well, I would say we should try to meet uh, at the eleventh. We can talk about the next meeting, but yeah, I would say try to avoid school vacation week. Maybe. And you're gone yeah. the week before school vacation. I'm going. I'm going from the seventeenth to the twenty fifth. Okay, and the 25th is cool. Yeah, but you okay. know, you can meet without me. Probably okay. better if you do. <laughs> okay. All right. Then why don't we. Uh, are, there, are there applicants? Just one other question. Yes, sir. Do we know if there are applicants to there, fill Richard's position? There or? is one. Or some, somebody that reached out to it. me. A, a, a nice gentleman by the name of Tom Dixon has reached out to me. Oh, Tom has? Oh, really? Tom has. Oh, and I said, I'll buy you a cup of coffee or an iced tea, and I will gladly chat with you about this. And we just haven't had a chance to connect since. So, Tom, if you're listening again, <laughs> I owe you a coffee. Um, but that's, he's the only person that I've heard. Yeah. yeah. Well, because he serves for Dylan, um, he'll, he'll know a fair amount about Falmouth, just for example. Interesting. And the vineyard. He'll, he, yeah. He should understand each of those communities. So. Maybe we can recruit somebody who wants to take notes. <laughs> uh, sounds, sounds, like so good. sounds like Mr. Sounds like Mr. Dixon to me. How can beat you? <laughs> I know. Um, uh, all right. I have a question. Yes, sir. How does the oh the vineyard is how many towns? Four, five, five. Uh, five? So okay. there's no analogy there of um, vineyard to us. I'm curious. Island to island. Not really. I'd probably if you looked at edge of town, I mean it's big enough to have some substance the other towns are pretty small yeah. so how are they run i think i, I shouldn't come i i think they're all town meetings but Open. you know curtis i i could be wrong uh, that's always been my understanding as well yeah, yeah. but okay a collection of small towns <laughs> that's, right. that's, ex that's exactly right. Yeah. All right all right well if there's no other business may i have a motion to adjourn at 138 so moved. Second. Right, moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Okay, so Joe Hale is going to hear from me. Good. And Jason will hear from me as well. And I will post, and I will post the meeting just in case. Yes. Will you be there? I'm not sure. Let's see if I get a hall pass for that one. <laughs>